right, so when you go to buy title insurance, they give you a policy, just like when you buy car insurance, and there's a whole list of things they don't cover. Okay, and Danny, what is that insurance policy called? There's a special name for it. Uh, liability. No. Land title insurance? That's what they should call it. They should call it land title insurance, but it's called a land title report. A land title report is an offer from an insurance company to insure the title to a specific piece of property. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's an offer to insure, just like if you call Progressive and said, I need car insurance, and they say, here's the policy we'll give you for $150 a buck a month, Landon. Here's what it covers, here's what it doesn't cover. That's what a title report is. It's an offer to insure a particular piece of property with a set of things they'll cover and a set of things they won't cover. Okay? The set of things they won't cover are called the exclusions to the policy. So the title company says, yep, we'll guarantee you, Danny, that Landon the Land Baron actually owns this piece of property that you want to buy, but we're going to exclude all these things. So for, oh, wait a minute, let's go back to our example. So I sold Danny this 200 foot strip. Okay, and this is all swamp land, except for the bottom 200 foot. So this is 200 foot by 200 foot. Okay, and that was included in this deed to Vanessa. So she gets the south 200 feet by 1,000 feet. Okay, now here's what title insurance does. So, Danny goes to buy this piece of property, he goes to his bank, and he says, I need money to buy this 200, 200 foot strip of property from Landon. And the bank says, that's fine, Danny, you're a good customer, you got good credit, we'll give you a loan, but you need to get title insurance. So Danny says, okay, so he goes, calls the title company, he says, hey, my bank says I need title insurance on this piece of property. Title insurance company says, sure, we'll give you title insurance on that. So they give Danny title insurance policy, but one of the exceptions in the title insurance policy says, hey, we'll insure everything on this property, but exclusion number one is we're not going to insure the south 200 feet. Because the title insurance company sees the deed that I gave Vanessa. Okay, now this is a slightly contrived example because the title company doesn't know this overlaps. Because in order to know that, in order to know that overlaps, you need a surveyor to figure that out most of the time. But just bear with me on the example. Okay? So Danny goes to the bank and says, hey, I, I got an offer for title insurance. And the bank looks at it and says, hey, Danny, that's great. That's great, but uh, you understand that we're not going to, we're, we're not, no, here's what the bank would say. So if the bank, you got a good loan officer at the bank, he looks at this piece of property and says, Danny, where are you going to put your house? She says, oh, there's a nice piece of dry land right here with a view of the lake. And the bank says, yeah, we're not going to give you the loan because the title insurance company won't insure that. Okay? And so Danny goes back and tells me what? I can't buy your piece of property, Landon. No deal because I can't get title insurance and my bank is going to make me have it. So here's what title insurance companies do. They track every deed that's ever recorded at the local county recorders on every piece of property that's ever bought or sold in the United States. Every county in the United States, every deed that is ever filed at the recorders is tracked by a title company somewhere. And they're trying to look for these kinds of problems. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a real life example of how this, this happened on a job Danny and I worked on. Okay? I'll give you a quick example. But do you guys understand what a title report is? It is an offer to insure a particular piece of land with a specific set of exclusions. <clears throat> and we'll do another class and we'll look at an example title report. Okay? Exclusions are the exceptions as well. Exceptions, yeah, that's what they're called. Exceptions to insurance coverage. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give you a real life example of a project that Danny and I worked on. A piece of property up in Sacramento. It looks something like this. And over here was a railroad track. It's a 200 foot railroad right away. Okay? And there was an old survey map that showed this used to be enough. Let's make it 250. 250 and 250. And it showed this 250 foot right away and it had a little note that said something like uh, old railroad right away. Quick claimed by deed recorded da 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 da. So the railroad was given 500 feet by Congress because Congress used to give railroads property. So Congress gave the railroad 500 feet. The railroad only needed 250, so they quick claimed 250 feet that they didn't need to the landowner. 
Okay, so we get hired to work on this project, and the developer is going to put student housing on here. Okay, and so we show this boundary. That's what's on the survey map. That's what we think they own. That's what their deed says. Okay, so the developer gets this design approved to build these this student housing, and, and this particular developer, he doesn't do the construction. He just buys the property, gets the design approved, and then he sells it to a developer that actually builds it. So he goes to sell this property to the company that's actually going to build the student housing, okay? And the company that's going to buy it, their title company says, sure, we'll give you a $10 million loan on that piece of property, go get his title insurance. So he goes to the title company, and the, the developer says, okay, title company, I need insurance so I can get this loan. And the title insurance company looks at some of the records, and they say, sure, we'll give you title insurance, but we're only giving you insurance for this. We're not going to give you insurance for that 250 feet. And the developer says, why not? They say, hey, it's great that you got a quick claim deed from the railroad, but because that right away was granted by Congress, only Congress can only Congress can get rid of it. So they said, unless you have an act of Congress, we can't insure title to that land. Like I literally, you know how they say, well, it takes an act of Congress. Like literally, it would take an act of Congress to fix this. Okay. Because if the title company won't insure it, can you get a loan for it? No. No. So what did they have to do in that? Okay, so here's what saved us on this. The same title company that didn't want to insure it for the buyer insured it when the, when the seller bought it. So the seller so went back to the title insurance it. company and said, hey, you, you can't it insure more. it to me and then not insure it to my buyer. And the title company said, you're right, we're screwed. We have to insure it. Now here's the interesting thing. When you look at an aerial photo and you go down this strip of properties, you'll get one property that's built all the way out and the next property you see the gap. And the next property is built all the way out. On these properties, the title insurance company would insure. On these, they wouldn't. <laughs> the title insurance company wouldn't insure it. They didn't build on it. And they just left it that way. They left it blank because they couldn't get it insured. Can't you sue... Hmm. Can't you sue the county in some way because oh. it's property that's not no. being utilized? It takes an act of Congress. To, so you either get an act of Congress or you find an insurance company that's willing to insure the risk. That's what you do. Because there technically is not going to be a risk, right? I mean... Well, Congress could at some point come in and say, hey... Yeah, but the yeah. odds... Okay, but we're talking about millions and millions of dollars. Oh. So it just depends on what your title insurance companies, what kind of risk... It's just like when you go, when you go to apply for car insurance... Right? Like, let's say I had a DUI 15 years ago, okay? Some, some insurance companies are going to tell me what? No. We won't insure you. You had a DUI 15 years ago. And some insurance companies are going to look at that and they're going to say, man, Landon hasn't had so much as a parking ticket in 15 years. We'll insure him. We'll take the risk. Okay? Okay, so a title, now, so depending on what's in your title report, some title companies will make this an exclusion, some won't. Okay? All right, so that's a title report. Okay, and the reason title insurance is important because it, it all boils down to what kind of financing you can get on a deal when you're in the land development business. Okay, so that's a land title report. Okay, it's just an offer to insure. Okay, so now we're going to talk about land title service. This is the whole point of why we wanted to talk about this. Okay. So here's what the banks realized after a while. They said, you know what? It's great that the title companies track all these deeds going back and forth, but there's a lot of stuff that you don't know if you don't get a survey. So you remember that example I had with the 200 by 200 foot piece that was double deeded? Okay, you can't, it's really hard to figure that out from paper, especially if you're not a surveyor. Okay, so what the banks decided at some point was, hey, for stuff that's really expensive, the title company isn't good enough, we want a survey. We want to know where those lines are at on the ground, and we want that surveyor to go look around. Okay? And so they came up with a way, a system. They said, hey, they said there's certain types of prop transactions we won't insure without a survey. Okay? And as a general rule in the United States, if you are buying a parcel that isn't residential, in other words, it's commercial, ag, industrial, high density residential, if it's not a single family home, and you are getting financing through a bank, they make you get a land title survey. Now, there are some companies that will finance, and you gotta remember, banks compete with one another. So there may be some banks that say, hey, we're not gonna get, we're not gonna make you get a title insurance, title survey, because we want your business. But as a general rule, banks will make you get a survey, okay? And there's, run, there's 
primarily, so the reason the banks do that is they want the surveyor to find out if there's any problems on that property that, that the title company can't find or didn't find. And Danny, we do title surveys all the time. I don't know, what percentage of surveys do we catch something a little bit funky that the title company misses? 50%? Yep. So half of the time we do a survey, we find something that the title company missed. Okay? Because we got boots on the ground. And like, who is really the only qualified professionals to interpret deeds? Land surveyors. Land surveyors. So we find stuff. Okay? Now, when we find a problem, okay, then the bank and the title insurance company go back and forth. And they say, hey, can we fix this? Can we not fix it? If we can't fix it, are you willing to insure it? How much more will that cost us? Okay, and there's some back and forth. Okay, but here's the whole reason why banks get a title survey, land title survey. They get a land title survey so that if something goes wrong, the bank wants to be able to sue the title company and surveyor. the land surveyor. So, I'll give you an example. If we do a survey, and I mess something up. I forget to shoot the corners of an adjacent building, and that building is over the property line, okay? And the buyer goes to develop the property, and the county says, uh-uh, we are not gonna let you develop because you've got an encroachment on your property line. The buyer's gonna sue their title company, okay? Title company's gonna sue me, okay? Or the bank is gonna sue the title company, and the title company's gonna sue me, or the bank and the buyer are gonna sue the title company and me. But no matter what happens, I'm going to get sued by somebody. Okay? Now, same rules apply. Does it do any good to sue a broke drunk? No. Okay? So, one of the things that they make you do if you're in the title survey business is they make the surveyor carry insurance from a reputable insurance company. Okay? So, our policy is a million dollars. That's what most surveyors' policies are is a million. Some surveyors are two million. Okay. So the bank knows if something goes sideways, they can get at least how much out of me? A mil. A mil. I'm worth at least a mil. Okay. Now, here's the problem of what a lot of people don't think about. So I surveyed some property in San Francisco a few months back near downtown. Okay. Two separate parcels. They're putting. Uh, they're, they built brand new high density residential condos on them. Okay. Now, my liability insurance is a million bucks. What do you think those two properties were worth next to downtown? A lot more than that. A lot more than a mil. I don't know, 10 million a piece, 20 million a piece. So what's the problem now with suing me? They're only gonna get a mil. You're underinsured. So I'm underinsured for the risk. So there's a couple situations you can get into there. The, the lender might say, hey, Landon, on this deal, we want you to carry $20 million worth of insurance not a million, and then I go to my insurance company and say, hey, for this one deal, how much does it cost to get another $19 million worth of coverage? And they say two grand, and I say, okay, and I pass that bill on to the client, so that's one possibility, right? Another possibility is the title insurance company says, hey, we know Landon's only good for a mill, but he does really good work, and we just want to get our hands on a survey. Okay? And we'll look at the survey and decide if there's enough risk here to need more insurance. And they look at my survey and they say, man, Landon did a really good survey, we don't see any potential problems here, we're going to go ahead and make this loan without, and we'll just let Landon carry a million dollars worth of insurance. And that's usually what happens. I'm usually not asked to carry more insurance. But like, I want you to think about something. They built a brand new arena in Sacramento downtown, and downtowns are hard to survey, and there's all kinds of problems. And somebody did a land title survey of that property. In fact, I know who it was. I know what company did it. Okay? What do you think that arena's worth? Tens of millions. Tens of millions. Do you think that surveyor's insurance company policy covered that tens of millions at all? No, right? So like you just have to, so what the really smart thing to do in that situation is you get a land title survey and then you pay the specialist attorney to run chain. You do it the old way. You get the insurance and you do it the old way just to double check because there's not enough insurance to cover a problem, potential problem, okay? So when we do a land title survey,